What's up guys, it's your favorite realtor, JP, and we are starting a brand new segment, which I'm excited about. It's called Coffee Questions with JP. Now, I did have my coffee already, so I do promise that by the next one, there will be a coffee and I will be drinking it, and this will be every Friday. And basically what it comes down to is, you send me some questions and I'll give you the answers. Let's get right into it. So the first question we have comes from Diana Carrera in Downey, California. Uh, it goes like this. My parents only have an IT number and I have been working with good standing and they have been working with good standing for the last 20 years. Can they co-sign for me? Hashtag Latino problems, hashtag DACA. Diana, that's a great question. In fact, there is programs out there if you have an ITIN number. They do require a bit more of a down payment. It's quite a complicated process, but I do know lenders that have made this happen. So what I would advise is to go ahead and message me and I will direct you to the right people you should talk to, but there definitely is the possibility. And I know it's a little bit more uh, stricter on the terms and guidelines, but it definitely is possible. Next question comes from Carlos L. Mendoza from Los Angeles, California. I've been in the Army National Guard for three years now. How do I know if I qualify for the GI Bill to buy a home? Can I buy anywhere? Carlos, great question. So you mentioned National Guard. I'm assuming you're drilling. This means you're doing the weekend, two weeks out of the year type training. If it, it, have you done any 90-day deployments, uh, maybe some unit tosses or stuff like that? This is very important. And you to fully utilize your uh, VA benefits, there's a certain amount of time that you have to get in there. So uh, I would suggest give me a call. Let's go ahead and see what you have uh, done. Maybe uh, getting basically uh, some information from your admin and therefore go that route. But I have helped National Guard uh, veterans get their benefits, so it's definitely possible. It's just about figuring out exactly where you fall on that. Great question. All right, so Daisy Funes from Whittier. How long do I have to wait in order to refinance or refinance out of my PMI? It's beep expensive. So PMI, for all you that don't know, it's private mortgage insurance. Normally, if you uh, put a, a low down payment that's not enough and where it, it meets the criteria for the bank, they will attach in their mortgage insurance. This is to protect the bank in the event that you default. Now, normally, there's a certain percentage that you need to meet in regards to equity versus what's owed for them to completely remove it. I have seen situations though where that's not the case and if you basically don't go check, you might be stuck paying this PMI for some time. So what I usually advise my buyers is every six months, sit down with your lender, whoever did your loan, and have that conversation in regards to PMI and uh, mortgage insurance and having it removed and when it's the right time and how does your property currently look right now. Very important. So just like you check with your CPA, your dentist, you should be checking up with your realtor and your lender when it comes to situations like this. With the realtor, especially because if you're making any improvements in the property, you want to make sure that what you're putting in makes sense. I see many stories where somebody buys a house, puts a strap again on it, puts a $150,000 chandelier, yet the neighborhood does not support that. You're not going to get that money back and quite frankly, it doesn't matter if you refinance or not, it's just, it's not a wise investment. Just putting that out there. Now, uh, Walter, Walter Clarice, or uh, Clarice, Clarice from Fullerton, hope I said that right, Walter, JP. I don't, when, when you have that much exclamation uh, points, do you just run it off? Ask him. My parents want to transfer our house over to me. Can they do that? They don't work and want me to pay. I don't know if I qualify yet. Walter. My man. We need to work on that run on sentence, brother. I got a, I got a training session just for that. Uh, Walter, so what Walter is trying to say is his parents currently own the property, they are not working, and they want to transfer it over to him. Now Walter, very important, do they owe anything on the property? Is there currently a, a loan on the property? If there is a loan on the property, then they can't just transfer that over to you. You would have to qualify, meaning meet 
a lender criteria, that's FICO score, job, all that good stuff in order for you to assume that loan. If they just want to put you in title, definitely possible. Anybody can just add somebody in title as long as the original title holders agree to it and sign a deed. Um, but if it's the other situation, you would have to qualify for it. Best thing would do is contact me. Let's have you locked in with my lender. See what they think of the whole situation and better guide you. Then we can move forward. Stephanie from Los Angeles. Can I withdraw money from my annuity and use it as a down payment? Is the minimum required 20%? Now, we heard of 401ks being withdrawn. So this is the first that I hear of an annuity being withdrawn for a house purchase. Now, 401ks usually have programs that you can withdraw from and then utilize that as a down payment. But for an annuity, that's a tough one because some annuities have regulations. In fact, I just called my homegirl, shout out to Desiree, I had to ask her about this, in regards to if that's even possible. And what she said is depending how that money was loaded into that annuity, it can play a big part on that withdrawal. So there is penalties. Normally in annuity, you have to be 59 and above or 59 and a half and above in order to withdraw any t anything under that, any age under that, you get a very hefty fee and I'm pretty sure Uncle Sam's gonna come knocking on your door. So Stephanie, you might wanna talk to your provider, your CPA, your accountant, whatever uh, set that up for you and ensure that's good. In regards to the minimum required, it starts off at 3.5%. If you're a veteran, it's 0%. But you can do 5%, you can do 10%, 15%, 20%. If you go to commercial, then it's a whole different ball game. But if you're qualified well and your credit is good, it's the first time you're buying a home, I would definitely suggest go FHA 3.5%. Great program. Lastly, we have Brandon Jimenez from San Fernando. I want to buy a duplex or a triplex. Is the down payment more? 30%? And my friend said I need to have eight months of mortgage payment in the back. Thank you. Uh, great question. For a duplex and triplex, you can definitely use your FHA 3.5%, which is a great program. Uh, it does require you for you to move into one of the units, but it's a flexible uh, a term in which if you sit down with the right realtor, they can definitely guide you. Give me a call. But in regards to down payment, it's only 3.5%. Now, it does get a little bit more trickier once you start going above six units. That's when they might require a bit more. They, it, it also comes down to depending on the asset. If we're talking more than eight units, if we're talking commercial strips, it's really dialed down in what the asset value is versus what you qualify. So it, it's a lot more parts that gets in there. It has to make sense. So if you're just looking at a duplex and triplex, you do not need reserves at the moment. If you're gonna go pro uh, FHA 3.5%, it's good to have, makes you look better on paper though but it's not a requirement. And yes, you can purchase a duplex and a triplex with a little as 3.5%. And if you're a veteran, Brandon, you can still purchase a duplex and a triplex with 0% down. So guys, that was a good set of questions there. Send me your questions. You can message me, DM me here. Make sure to follow us on the JP Pena. Subscribe, ring that bell so you can get notified once we upload these. We will be having them every Friday. Coffee with JP and some real estate questions. It could be real estate, business, life, family. Heck, I might even have questions for you. So keep them coming. Have a great day. Enjoy.